uh, we finished uh, equivalence and uh, similar matrix last time around i guess uh, so from there it would be ideal ha uh, we finished linear transformation that part right yeah yes okay uh, ma'am just yes. one request uh, just stay in quick uh, quick way uh, on to and one to one actually you explained uh, one to one in great detail but uh, hmm. on to uh, you just give the definition of range so oh, i also did not tell you how to find basis for uh, kernel and image using matrix no no ma'am right? that is also not covered. that was also not covered yes ma'am uh, but uh, someone had asked that doubt and i had uh, answered at the end of the session okay fine so uh, we quickly do one one on two so yes. when do you say a linear transformation is uh, one 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 melody is yeah so the, the definition is uh, t v is equal to 0 implies v is equal to 0 so this is how we will check this is equivalent to telling that uh, kernel of the transformation is 0 uh, or same as nullity is equal to 0 right so this is when a map is 1 to 1 and uh, on to t is on to uh the definition what is the definition of on to for every vector in the codomain there is a vector in the domain which gets mapped to it right so you have the domain and the codomain and the linear transformation on to means the range of the linear transformation is equal to the codomain that is every point has a pre image Ah. and dimension of the codomain or codomain no the range is equal to codomain the rank is equal to dimension dimension okay. okay yeah rank is the dimension of the range so every point in the codomain has a pre image or in other words the range of the linear transformation is equal to the codomain so what is range of the linear transformation it is the set of all images right yes yes yeah yes so it is the set of all images of the linear transformation uh, so this is the range if this is equal to the codomain then it is an on to map or in other words you can check the rank of the linear transformation and check whether it is equal to the dimension of w or in any case you can always use the rank nullity theorem Uh, if you are comfortable finding the nullity you can do that and then use the rank nullity theorem to check for uh, on to as well okay so there was a map i guess we discussed uh, last time i don't remember exactly if this is the map but t of a b c d goes to a comma b or something like this right yes yeah yes is this map on to <laughs> no ma'am on to uh... do you remember what the one one on to ha on to yeah kernel is set of all 0 0 c d right nullity will be same yeah it's not on to but one it's on to but not one to one yeah the kernel was this so nullity is dimension of kernel so this was 2 from reality theorem we can say rank is 2 right this is four right. dimensional and yes, this is two dimensional so rank is 2 it is right. equal to dimension of codomain right so it is on on to ma'am i have one not ah uh, uh, yes ma'am actually a is a matrix that is come from uh, a linear transformation t um, okay it's a general matrix like that so t is mapping from b to w so actually okay. uh the question is t cannot be zero transformation by but i can't understand why it can be zero transformation it can be zero transformation right yes no, i have given? the same doubt it can be a zero matrix also yeah it, it a is a zero matrix the uh, a is a matrix man ha uh. ha uh, the linear chain that is uh, coming from the linear transformation b to w okay Uh, so the options are like uh, which is the correct option so one of the options is t which, cannot from where did you get this question uh um, this two yeah it's a mark for this question number 2 is it given a is a non zero matrix or something 
Yes, ma'am. It is given. M N N M by N matrix. It was given real matrix. Oh, it is coming from that. Since the uh, linear uh, matrix representation is not not, uh, not zero matrix, so it won't be a zero transformation. But uh, but explicitly it can be given because that is only for question number one, I think. Uh, it was comprehensive type question, I guess. Ah, uh, that A is a non-zero thing. That is, I think, uh, common for uh, both. Then then it is fine. Yeah. yeah. But otherwise, if that is a general thing, if non-zero is not given, it can be zero also. The okay. zero transformation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Um, on to is done. We know how to find matrix of a linear transformation. Uh, how will we do? Uh, we can find the matrix only if we know the linear transformation, a basis for the domain, and basis for the codomain. Codomain. With all this information, we can write down the matrix of a linear transformation. Its order will be dimension of W cross dimension of V. So you'll pick all the basis elements for the domain, find their images. So say V1, V2, Vn or something. So you'll find the image of each of the basis elements for the domain using the transformation and express it in terms of basis for the codomain. codomain. Yeah, this will be in terms of gamma. So all the coefficients that you get, you will put it as the first column of the matrix. Right? Ma'am, one doubt. Uh, ah. When do we directly uh, take just the coefficients of the linear transformation and make a matrix? Standard that is when you are expressing ah, the matrix is with respect to standard ordered basis. Then you do that. Okay. Yeah. Because when you do standard ordered basis, that is what you will get. No, directly the coefficients of the variables only you will get as yeah. images. So okay. yeah. So ma'am, in such case, the answer will be always be the unique, right? And uh, yeah. it will not give if uh, linear transformation and both the bases are given, you will get only one matrix. Everybody will get the same matrix. Okay, so we will get such a basis that uh, that uh, we can derive in terms of uh, linear transformation, right? Means beta can be expressed in terms of gamma. No, 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 no. Why? No, see, V and W can be two completely different spaces like this. Mm -hmm. Matrices R2. It can be completely different. So the basis for the domain and the basis for the codomain has no relation here, right? But still, you can write down matrix of this linear transformation. I guess you're confusing with uh, equivalent matrices or something. Uh, no, ma'am. Suppose uh, one beta is uh, given uh -huh. and gamma is given. Okay. okay. So we are expressing, suppose, uh, beta a vector in terms of gamma vector, right? No, you cannot always do that. No. Okay. Ah, because V and W may be completely different spaces. So how will you express here, for example, how will you express a matrix in terms of R2, elements in R2? You cannot, right? Mm -hmm. right. Oh, I think you're missing this. You will find the image of the element in beta and then mm -hmm. express it in terms of gamma. So once you find the image, you are inside W, right? Yes, yes, that, that, I'm that, uh -huh, that you will express in terms of gamma. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, just one example. Uh, one uh, f uh, one is given. F x y equal, mm. mm. uh, uh, equal to two x equal to two x y. Okay. No, this is not a linear transformation. It's not a linear no. transformation. No. Uh -huh. Say I have this. Say ah, yes, from sorry. R two to R two. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, then two x y is given, and now we have given v equal to w. Both are same. Okay, yeah, V is W, yes. Uh, and beta and gamma is given as both are also same, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Okay. Both are same, beta and uh, gamma. Uh. Okay. So uh, right now we, we can we have to express 1, 0 in terms of uh, 2, 0, right? Uh, F of 1, 0, you'll F find out. F of 1, out. 0 equal uh, to 2, uh, 0. So here we are placing, placing wise. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, so here we can express... Uh, See, uh, basis 1, 0 and 0, 1 in terms of uh, 2, 0, right? We have to uh, make it to uh, express that, right? 
you have to write 20 in terms of 10 ah, and 0 and 0 1. 1 yes yes yeah. and then here coefficient will be our matrix uh, column ah this 2 and 0 will be the first column Ah, so I'm asking, ma'am. Ah, uh, so they uh, the question will be come there. We can express right like this. Suppose we want to derive in matrix form. Mm. Okay. So such type of uh, derivation will all possible, right? In that question. Yes, because you will be given a basis for the codomain, so this will always yeah. be possible. Be, ha, ha, ha. Okay, okay. That's I'm asking. Okay. Fine. So, given a linear transformation and a basis for the domain and codomain, you can find out the matrix of the linear transformation. And you can also go back from the matrix, you can find out what the linear transformation is, provided you are given both these bases, <coughs> beta and gamma. If you know beta and gamma and the matrix of the linear transformation, then you can find out what the linear transformation is. So, uh, we have done a lot of problems in that. You can go back and watch in case you have doubts. Ma now, a uh, little, huh. little bit confused, ma'am. When you <coughs> converting from matrix to linear transformation, that actually. Yes, uh, ma'am. Can you explain one? Yeah, I will do Mat one example. Mat Mat matrix to linear transformation. Mm. Say I have R2 to R3. Uh, say uh, the linear transformation matrix is, uh, it will be a three cross two matrix. Okay. So. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Suppose this is, let me include some zeros for simplicity. Suppose this is the matrix of the linear transformation with respect to uh, 1, 0, 1, 1 for the domain and uh, say 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0. Say this is the basis for the domain and this is the basis for the codomain. And this is the matrix of the linear transformation. Now our aim is to find the linear transformation itself. That is, we have, we have to find out what is T of X comma Y. <laughs> so now the matrix is given. How did we get this matrix? We took the basis elements for the domain and found their images. This is the basis elements for the domain, right? Basis for the domain is 1, 0, 1, 1. So what we how we find the matrix is we find the image for these two elements, which we don't know now because we don't know the linear transformation. But we know that the first column represents the coefficients in terms of these basis elements, right? Yes, ma'am. One times yes, one zero zero plus two times one zero one plus three times zero one zero. This is how we got the matrix of the linear transformation. So now we know what the image is. Uh, 1 plus 2, 3, three, 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 three. Uh, Ma'am, just one quick uh, question uh, huh. here. Uh, here you have directly multiplied it or uh, taken 1, 2, and 3 uh, for, uh, you know, the when you represent it, write it in the code domain. Uh, hmm. So, it, when do you take this uh, directly? And in some cases, you have to calculate that alpha plus beta equal to whatever is the value and then substitute that. No, here we know the matrix, right? Yeah. So what, how, if I know the linear transformation, what does this one, two, three represent? Oh, that's the column of that matrix. Right, but where did the column come from? If I know the linear transformation, I know what is T of one, zero, right? Yes. Because I will just substitute x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0 and get the answer, right? Right. 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 And then right. to get the matrix, what will we do? This I will substitute, uh, means this I have to express in terms of these three elements, right? Yeah. Yeah. That time I will put alpha, beta, gamma and I have to find out what is alpha, beta, gamma, right? Right. And after I find out these coefficients, where do these th coefficients go? They go into the column of the matrix which will be formed. Yeah, exactly. Now, I don't know the linear transformation, so I don't know this part. Yeah. But I know that these are the coefficients, right? So I just put that here, one, two, three. Ah, okay. So it's the other way around. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then using that, I find out what this value is. Okay. So these coefficients okay. are matter alpha, beta, gamma, what? Uh, so no, these coefficients... Beta is our one, zero, and one, one, right? 
ah this is okay beta, beta. This, this is, is gamma. gamma ah yeah a uh, beta belongs to uh, r2 and ah, gamma belongs, uh, belongs to, r2. to the domain and gamma belongs yeah. to co domain gamma belongs to uh, co domain co domain yes. yeah so we are expressing uh, domain in terms of co domain no we are not expressing anything Sorry, in no, terms no, no, of no, anything no. else ah we are finding yeah. the images so this is an element yeah. in the co domain okay okay uh, after that what ma'am after uh, finding the images uh, then ah now t of 1 1 I I don't know what T of one one is because I don't know the linear transformation, but I know that these are the coefficients for these vectors, right? Yes. Yeah. Four times Four one, one zero double, zero, one, zero plus zero times zero. this plus zero, zero, zero times. So I'll zero. get four zero zero. Now once I know the linear transformation on a basis, I can find the linear transformation, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So ma T of x comma y, I have to find out. in terms of these two because i know t of 1 0 and t of 1 1 right so x yes, comma y equal to alpha so x, first i x, have to express ha huh, x comma y x in, in terms of 1 huh, 0 like and uh, 1 1, 1. yeah and if we apply t both sides we are going to find that yeah so alpha plus beta is x and beta is y so this is beta is y alpha plus beta is x so alpha is x minus y that's all once this is done t of x comma y i know t is a linear transformation so x minus y times t of 1 0 plus y times t of 1 1 and i know what t of 1 0 is 3 3 3 2 and t of 1 1 is 4 0 0 That's all. So x three three x minus three y three x minus three y two x minus two y plus four y zero zero. That's all. <coughs> This is the linear transformation. Three x plus y three x minus three y two x minus two y. You can also verify. So now you know the linear transformation. and you know the basis for the domain and the codomain you can verify whether you get this or not whether you get this matrix or not if yes then your answer is right uh, ma'am would we get questions like this in exam because it's quite time consuming as well to a certain extent if you have to cross verify it as well no as cross verification is just for confirmation otherwise okay see but cross verification is also not that difficult you have to find out t of 1 0 what is t of 1 0 3 3 2 that's yeah. what we already got right right yeah. and t of 1 1 is going to be 4 0 0 yes yeah will the basis be given ma'am beta and gamma yeah if the basis is not given you cannot do all this because there may be different bases Dif based on the what the basis is the matrix will be different So if unless the basis is given, you cannot do this. Standard ordered basis. If not given, can we assume standard ordered basis? Yeah, you can, but definitely the basis will be given. Otherwise, each each one can assume a different basis, right? So the basis will definitely be given. Okay. Ma'am, but uh, why did you do x comma y equals uh, this explicitly in terms of one comma zero and one comma one? Because that is what we know. No, we know t of one zero and t of one one. That is the only thing that we know. We don't know anything else, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's why. Madam, can we share the sheet, sir? Share the sheet, sheet, sheet. the sheet. PDF, PDF. Is the PDF. one which you are uh, after the session, on. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After the session. Um, Ma'am. Uh, you can share this in the that itself, then. Where? Where? We can save it, then. Uh, Ma'am. Ah, uh, yes. From how to uh, find the basis of linear transformation? So there is no basis for linear transformation. There is only basis for a vector space. Ah, okay. Ma'am, you have written x y is equal to uh, linear combination of the uh, basis of the given. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Because yeah. that is what we know. We know t of one zero and t of one one. So I have to write x y in terms of these two because ultimately when I apply t, that's what I want, right? Yes, ma'am. And by this we can get. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. So this uh, is just one last uh -huh. question uh, here. Yeah. Uh, you know, in this case, we have the uh, movement from R three to R two, where it's like three cross three to uh, two cross two, I guess. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think. And uh, so, uh, sorry, R two to R three. Would we have questions where it is R three to R three itself? Then in that case, uh, would the process be same or? Yeah, exactly some... the same. Okay. Finding out the matrix. See, this is the, uh, here. I have given an example, but T from V to W, where beta is a basis for V and gamma is a basis for W, it's exactly the same procedure, irrespective okay. of what that V is and. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, yes. Now, given a linear transformation, we know how to find a matrix and all that. So given a linear transformation, we know how to find kernel of the linear transformation and image of the linear transformation, image or range, whatever it is, both are the same. So uh, you can find out the kernel and image given the linear transformation. But suppose the linear transformation is not given, uh, just the matrix of the linear transformation is given. Uh, given uh, the matrix of the linear transformation, you can find out the linear transformation and then find kernel image and all that. Or directly from the matrix itself, you can find out uh, the kernel and image of a linear transformation. So we have done an example last time as well. Let's take the same example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0. Suppose this is the matrix of the linear transformation. With respect to the basis 1, 0, 1, 1, and uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and uh, 0, 1, 0. Suppose this is the matrix of the linear transformation. You can directly find out the image of the linear transformation from the matrix. So one way to do it is you find the linear transformation like this and then find the range, all that. Or you can do directly from the linear trans matrix itself. So what you will do is uh, um, you will reduce first, into RREF. Yeah, you'll convert the matrix into RREF. So here in RREF, the first step is you will convert it into RREF. So for RREF, you will just have uh, one, zero, two, zero rows. Minus eight. Excuse me. Shall I directly write? Huh? Yes. Can you repeat the question? What will be the question for this? Finding the image of the linear transformation given the matrix of the linear transformation. Okay. Given the matrix, you can always find the linear transformation and then find the image. But directly from the matrix also, you can find out. Ma'am, basis is given or not? Basis will be given. Otherwise, nothing works. Okay. So shall I directly write the RREF for this or REF at least? This is the REF, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. This is the REF and RREF. Okay, this is going to become something. Uh, okay, let's quickly do that. Ah, okay, it will be 0, 1. This one, right? This is the RREF of the matrix. So what will you do is first you will find the basis for the range. How will you find the basis for the range? The first two Corresponding uh, columns of the uh, pivot ah, element. All yeah. the columns containing pivot element. Yeah. Yes. So you have a pivot here. You have a pivot here. So you will take the first two columns of the original matrix. Will that be the range? If a standard ordered basis. No, uh, then we to, uh, have to multiply If you have the standard, standard ordered order basis, basis, yes. Ah, if it's standard ordered basis, multiply. it is this. Otherwise, you this will serve as the coefficients for these elements, right? Yes, the range is in W. Yes, so you have to look for basis of W. So it will be 1 times 1, 0, 0, plus 2 times 1, 0, 1, plus 3 times 0, 1, 0. This is the first element, comma. The second element will be 4 times 1, 0, 0, plus 0 times this, plus 0 times this, right? So basis for range will be uh, 1 plus 2, 3, 3, 2, comma, 4, 0, 0, right? Yes, ma'am. This will be the basis for the range, not what you get directly. If it was the standard ordered basis, then it would be whatever you get directly. Yes, ma'am. 
otherwise you have whatever you get you will use that as the coefficients for the basis for the codomain and uh, get the range uh, basis once you know the basis you know the range right uh, ma'am uh, uh, you just created rref so how you you get that one is it a road into switzerland form yes yes uh, okay and ma'am suppose if the mat uh, matrix is not given uh, and only the uh, transformation and this basis is given huh. so uh, can we just directly convert that transformation into matrix and then uh, do this method instead of doing the regular method which we did previously for yes. finding the range uh, basis see if the it. linear transformation is given you don't need a basis no if you want to find the range of the linear transformation yeah but i feel this Uh, method is more easier. Ha! Huh. So if the linear transformation is given, you won't be given a basis. Just use the standard ordered basis and find the matrix and find the transformation. That's it. Find okay. the uh, uh, range. Okay. Because if the linear transformation is given, to find the range, you don't need any basis, right? Yes, ma'am. But if you find this method easier, then just convert, uh, write down the matrix in terms of the standard ordered basis. Okay, ma'am. Why standard ordered basis? Because that's the simplest. You can directly write down the matrix. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is basis for the range. So what is the range of the linear transformation? Span. You know the basis. Ah, you know the basis, span. right? So it's this span of this. This is the range of the linear transformation. How will you find out the kernel? Ma'am, just from the uh, R R F, huh. is equal to zero. We have to be. Yeah, find the null space of the reduced matrix. So you will find the null space of one zero zero one zero zero. So what is that? Zero comma. Yeah. So you will be finding out this, right? All solutions of this. Oh, what is it? X Y Z or X Y? X Y right? X Y X Y X Y ma'am. Yeah. So what is the null space? Zero. Zero zero. Zero comma. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a one to one map basically. Okay. What if the null space was something else? Say it was one comma two. Then what will you do? Um, we are gonna take this uh, as coefficients and we are gonna multiply that with the basis of the domain. By some indefinite. Yes. This is uh, standard order. Given a standard order. Yeah. yeah. If it's standard ordered basis, you stop here. Yeah. Otherwise, you will use this as coefficients for the basis of the domain. Domain was what one zero and one one, so you will put one times one zero plus two times one one, right? Yes. So the basis would be uh, uh, three comma two. Two. Yeah. So this is how it will be. But this is not the case here. In case it was, you will do this. You needn't get confused as to what basis you have to choose. Range means it is in the codomain, so you will take the basis for the codomain. Kernel means it's in the domain. Kernel is in the domain, so you have to choose basis for the domain. Means you will get the coefficients for the basis uh, elements of the domain. So there's no confusion in that. Ma'am, what is the use of uh, pivots in finding the range of linear uh, linear transformation? What, what is the use in the sense? What, uh, You're finding a basis using the pivots, right? The pivots indicate that you have linearly independent vectors there and all that. So okay. from there we get the basis. Ma'am, I have one doubt. Huh? Huh, consider like uh, that null space is uh, like that zero comma zero comma t. Huh. Okay, and the basis is. Um, that means domain is a uh, order uh, three basis. Okay. So, but that is not a standard order basis. So could okay. you express in terms of that one? What? Okay. Zero comma zero comma say something. Yeah, Good. like uh. Z, something like that. Ah. Uh. And the standard order basis for the it's not a standard order basis for the domain. It's something else. Okay. Uh, so you will first find the basis for this, right? Is zero comma zero comma one. Ah, 
so 0, 0, 1. This will serve as the coefficients for those vectors. Just like this. Okay. So we cannot stop this step. Uh, we need to further go into that if it is not a standard order basis. Yes. Okay. If it's standard ordered basis also, you are doing that step. Just that standard ordered basis, you will directly get the values, right? 0 yes. times 1, 0, 0, 0 times 0, 1, 0, 1 times 0, 0, 1. So you'll get the same element. No. That is why. Even in standard ordered basis, you are doing that step. But then it's not needed because you'll get the same answer. Uh -huh. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, this terminal one, can you please repeat? I just did not catch that. So you will find the null space of the reduced matrix. You will do RREF and get the reduced matrix, right? Yes. You will find the null space of that reduced matrix. After you get the null space, you will find a basis for the null space. You will get some basis, right? Like here it's 0, 0. But say the basis, suppose you get the null space as... Uh, Mm. Y is that equal to null space. To uh, just could you please take this trolley top? No? Uh, this huh. null space you got from the uh, this one. After converting yeah, yeah. The reduced so got the, uh, this to like uh, uh, the pivoted columns one zero zero one and zero zero, right? Yeah. That's the reduced and matrix. <laughs> you find the null space for that. Here it turns out to be 0, 0, right? You get x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Yes. But say, for example, the null space was y is equal to 2x. How will you write a basis for this? x, 1 by 2x. x, comma 2x, you will write. This will be the null space. So 1, comma 2, right? Yes. A basis is 1, comma 2. Yes, ma'am. So this is not the basis for the kernel. This is only giving you, ha, huh, yes. Ma'am, uh, that kernel, what exactly you mean? Like if the basis is 0, 0 or 1, 2, so what? The kernel is just just a vector of subset, subspace of the vector, subset of the vector, or what exactly it means? What is kernel of a linear transformation? Ma'am, ma quick question on this uh, y is equal to 2x. Uh, can we express it in terms of y as well? Or is it yes, you can do that also. You can write it as y by 2 comma y. So your base so will be half a... comma 1. Anything. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, can you please hmm. spell that? Kernel. See, kernel is the set of all pre-images of the zero vector. It is the set of all elements in the domain which Sorry. gets mapped to the zero vector. Zero. Okay. I have one what, doubt. What here. exactly it means, man? Like the vector which is uh, giving us zero vector. So that pre images means what exactly it means? See, this is you're looking at all those vectors that go to the zero vector in the codomain, right? Yes. So that's the pre images of the zero vector. If also, it, then, man, then uh, mostly then kernel will be zero only then. Because no, 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 no. See, you, you should go back and watch the videos and find out how to find the kernel and all that. Uh, you should probably watch the weak videos, the ones that discuss these topics. Uh, ma'am, I have one doubt. Mm, yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. So here, y equal to 2x. So we find uh, this is a null space, right? So yeah, this is a null space. Uh, yes. The question is asking find the null space of this linear transformation, then hmm. I will stop here or I need to further go into that. So this is not the null space of the linear transformation. See, this is not the null space, no? The null space is 3, 3x is equal to 2y or something or the other way around. See, this is the basis for the kernel, right? Yes. Ah, so this is not the, you shouldn't stop here. You will stop here only if it is the, uh, Standard order basis. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Then we have to again use the uh, basis or gamma and then let's use this as a coefficient and then uh, yeah. space. Not gamma, beta, because this kernel, no? So you're yeah, in yeah, beta, beta, beta. Yeah. yeah. Fine. So uh, this is how you uh, find the basis for range and kernel.
given the matrix of the linear transformation. If you know the linear transformation, you can directly find the uh, image and kernel and then get the basis. But uh, if you're comfortable with this procedure, you can do this as well. Convert it into matrix and then find the basis for range and kernel. Okay. Uh, I'm um, using a small example. Can you just help me out here, please? For what? For this kernel, because I'm getting really because I tried in that lecture, but I really could not catch what how to find out that. See, this was explained even in the previous life's uh, revision session. I will do it at the end. Uh, I will do it at the end if you want. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma please start week seven. Yeah. Please start. Okay. Yes. Ma'am, can you repeat the thing that you told before? Repeat what? The one that you before you asked me the doubt. Doubt from the last person. What 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 exactly do you want me to repeat? I don't remember what the I was saying. Last thing that you uh, before you start week seven, you said with the linear transformation to this. Is you went to start a next section before that is okay. I don't remember. I seriously don't remember what I said. No, she, you are if somebody asked whether it is in the codomain gamma, then since it is a kernel, you told it is beta, that is the domain. Domain, it is okay. Not the last thing that was the last thing you told. Is that what you wanted? Okay, you uh, can. Yes. Ah, okay. I was telling that this whatever you get, those will serve as the coefficients for the basis for uh, domain because we are talking about the kernel of the linear transformation. The kernel lies in the domain, so you will take the basis of the domain and put these as the coefficients for those vectors and then solve. You can go back and watch uh, like the last uh, revision session. At the end, I have done a problem on this. You can watch them. Okay. Ma'am, all this we have to do only when, if it is mentioned that it is not a linear transformation, then only we have to do all these steps. Otherwise, if it is mentioned linear transformation, we can directly, if it is in equation, then we can directly take it as 0, 0, 0 for kernel and ABC yeah. for uh, range, and then we can uh, Solve. find out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Whichever one is simpler. If you want to do this from there, even then you can convert it into a matrix and do anything. Actually, it's not that is easier. <laughs> ah, then, then okay, you can do that. Okay, what are equivalent matrices? B equal to equal to QAB. Yeah, two matrices are equivalent. A and B are equivalent. If you can find invertible matrices P and Q such that B is equal to QAP. So for equivalent matrices, you want A and B. To be of the same order, M, M cross N. Both should be M cross N matrices. Then you can talk about their equivalence. But uh, you needn't do so much of work finding out Q and P and all that. We have a nice condition for equivalent matrices. Two matrices are equivalent. If rank is, if and if only rank if is equal. Same rank. Same yeah. Rank. If and only if they have the same rank. So it's if and only if. They are equivalent, then they will have the same rank. If they have the same rank, they will be equivalent. So no worries. You just have to check the rank of the two matrices. If they are the same, then if they are of the same order, they will obviously be equivalent matrices. And uh, what are similar matrices? Ma'am, one minute. Huh. Yeah. Uh, I remember, but uh, I just asked for a doubt. So I have a mat two matrices, A and B, but they are different dimensions. So it cannot be equivalent matrix, right? Yeah, because you want Q and P to be square matrices, right? Uh, if they are having different dimensions, then this equation won't match. Yes, yes, yes. So basically what... Q will be what M cross M, P will be uh, N cross N, A is M cross N. So the B that you get will be M cross N, there's nothing else. Yes, yes. So uh, in this case, I mean, uh, we have to uh, reduce this matrix to echelon form and then get the rank and then check it. And then we say whether they are equivalent or not. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, for equivalent matrix, we don't, we don't need to bother about what is P and Q, right? We just find the rank. That's it. 
yeah you just if you want to check whether they are equivalent or not you just have to find the rank of rank. both the matrices okay. we don't need um, p and q right yeah unless you are asked what is asked. p and what is q it's not needed ma'am the condition uh, which uh, there was one condition like trace trace should be same and determinant uh, that is also similar matrices is it yeah because see equivalent matrices they are rectangular right they need not be square matrices oh yeah okay so you cannot talk about determinant trace correct, and all correct 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 yeah. okay okay fine thank you yeah. okay similar matrices it's same as equivalent matrices but instead of q you should have p inverse p yeah so whatever p you have here the same p inverse uh, before we go for the similar one uh, this yeah yeah go ahead yeah uh, before we go to the similar one equivalent matrix means that uh, regardless whatever p and q given in the question i just need to check a and b If they are same rank, then I can uh, clearly say that they are some uh, equivalent matrices, right? Yes, yes. So I don't only to go think of P and Q, right? No, unless it's asked for, it's not needed. Uh, can can we say that if two if two matrices are given and one is a transpose of another, then they are equivalent matrices because it, in that case, the dimension would still be same, and the rank would uh, will be same. No, the dimension of A and A transpose are not the same. Positive right? Oh, okay. See, A is m cross n, then A transpose is n cross n. N cross n. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was struggling to understand. But in the case of square matrices, matter, but can be possible, right? Yeah. Ma'am. They in fact be similar, no? We have also. Right. We'll get identity. identity. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, the. For similar matrices, mm. to get the P, we get it same as we do for equivalent matrices, right? Hmm. Okay. In the sense, uh, what? Uh, yeah, the there P is a there. procedure to get the P and the P and Q here. There is a procedure. Yes. So same, same for similar matrices, P also, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, ma can 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 we expect uh, that? Uh, there is a doubt. Can we expect what? P and Q, ma'am. They uh, will they ask in in exam, ma'am, or you don't need bother about that? Probably. No, why 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 will it not be asked? <laughs> I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be asked. So it's better to know the procedure. Ma'am, there is a confusion uh, in conversion uh, when bases are given. We have to find it, A and B. Uh, domain and codomain bases are given, and we have to find the at A and B, and as well as uh, P and Q. Mm. Interconversion. Yeah, 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 There yeah, is a I'll great confusion when to use which uh, basis. Yeah, I'll tell that. We'll quickly revise that as well. Okay. So similar matrices. Uh, it should satisfy this condition. There is no equivalent condition. Uh, something like this. There is no simple condition that talks about similar matrices. So the only way to check whether two matrices are similar or not is to check this condition. You can check this one. This is simpler. Yes. You just pre-multiply by p. You will get p b is equal to a p. You have to find a p that is invertible, and uh, tell that this is satisfied. Only then you can check whether they are similar or not. But telling something is not similar is easy, because similar matrices have the same rank, same determinant, same, same determinant, trace. same trace, and all that. So this is one way. If they are similar, then all this happens. But all these may happen, and still they will not. They may not be similar. For the P, what is this mean? Take like a sum of diagonal entries. Okay. Yeah, for the P matrix. Uh, this A and B are uh, square matrices, or uh, any rectangular matrix. No, no, matrix. similar. It is only square matrices. Square. Okay. Ma'am, ma uh, for for finding P, we always assume like A, B, C, D, and then solve it, and we'll find yeah, yeah. the P. Yeah, yeah. That is only one one. Yeah, that's one that's P. the only way. If P is invertible, no. after solving again, we have to check for the invertibility. Yes, yes. you may I'm get a zero row, in which case no no invertible P satisfies that condition, so they'll not be similar. Yeah, correct. I know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And for similar matrices, the P must be invertible. Yes, even for equal in matrices, the P and Q should be invertible. 
Uh, Ma'am, I have one question. Uh, one in the equivalence uh, matrix, actually. Mm. So uh, let's say Q is uh, M of uh, gamma 2 to gamma 1. Uh, mm. Means we are uh, expressing gamma 2 in terms of gamma 1. Then, one second. Uh, Shall I discuss that and then you ask your doubt? I'll just okay. quickly tell that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, I have one doubt. Uh, uh. Yeah, actually, we are doing that uh, linear transformation converting to matrix and find that kernel and uh, in, uh, range, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, I didn't do that way uh, because that is totally uh, little bit confused for me. So I have a linear transformation, and mm -hmm. uh, we use I, I use our traditional way like p of x equal to zero, mm -hmm. x equal mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. way. So on that way, I'm going. So I don't need to do that step like uh, express in terms of that one, that one. Express in terms of what? In standard and ordered basis. No, if you're using the linear transformation, no basis, nothing is needed. Huh, okay. Only okay. when matrices are involved, you need to look at what basis is being used. Okay, okay, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, I okay. had a doubt in the solve with us one question. Which one? Uh, seven, week seven, the fourth one. It's it's uh, basically like if you have A and B and you're given that they're similar matrices, mm -hmm. uh, Inverse and B inverse are similar, E square and B square are similar, E trans. Yeah, that was similar. already discussed in the session, right? Okay, okay. I'll just. Do yeah, you, you can check that or it's there on Discourse also, I guess. Okay, okay. I'll search Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So these equivalent matrices, uh, there's a. Where do they arise from? They uh, represent the same linear transformation, actually. So they come from the same linear transformation. If you take a linear transformation, say from T uh, V to W, then uh, equivalent matrices, like you may uh, use different bases and get different matrices, right? So uh -huh. using that, uh, each time you will get a different matrix. All those matrices will be equivalent. And similar matrices also arise from the same linear transformation. But here you want the domain and the co-domain to be the same, right? Because yes. you are looking at only square matrices. So that is the theory. They all represent the same linear transformation. That is how they are similar and equivalent and all that. So now, um, using this, using if the linear transformation is given, using that you can find out this P and Q. That is only that procedure, gamma 1, beta 1, gamma 1 and all that. So if you have a linear transformation T from V to W, and I have, say, one basis, beta 1 and gamma 1. Corresponding to this, I can write down a matrix of the linear transformation, right? Yes, and if I have another set of bases, I can write down another matrix of the same linear transformation. Yes, ma'am. And B. These two will be equivalent. And how will you find out? So I want to write P is equal to Q A, uh, B is equal to Q A P. This is what I know they are equivalent. So I know there is a Q and a P, which can be written in terms of this, like B is equal to Q A P. So how will you find out the P using the linear transformation? Express the B to beta two to beta one transformation will give P. Yeah. yeah. And so how will you remember which one, one is give which? Q inverse of the P is the, from the domain, madam. Ah, and, uh, right. Q will be Q inverse will be from uh, co-domain. Yeah. So if Q I have inverse. say uh, B is n-dimensional and W is m-dimensional, then A and B are going to be m cross n matrices, right? So B is m cross n. So Q will be m cross m. A is again M cross N, P is N cross N. So this is N, so it comes from the domain. And this is M, so it comes from the codomain. So even if you don't remember which one is from the domain and codomain, just keep this in mind. You will know which one is from the domain and which one is from the codomain. Ma'am, can you repeat once more? So if I have a, a linear transformation from V to W, where V is N dimensional and W is M dimensional, then the matrix is going to be of this order, right? M cross N, M cross N. Yes, yes ma'am. So if A and B are both M cross N, then B is equal to Q A P. Q will be M cross M and P will be N cross N, right? Only then this equation will be satisfied, right? 
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So that P, if it is n cross n, then it has to be from the domain, right? Because codomain is M. Is that clear? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma and Q is please, M cross N from the codomain. Huh? Can you please repeat it once again? Please? Yeah. So if I have two matrices that are equivalent, I know they come from the same linear transformation, right? That's the theory of equivalent matrices, right? Okay. They come from the same linear transformation. Okay. Yeah. So if they come from the same linear transformation, then I can write it down. I can write down the matrices using the same linear transformation, right? Yeah. Ah. So can I'm we going solve to one example? Huh? Can we solve one example? Uh, I don't want to solve the example and waste time here because it's time consuming. We have done a lot of examples during the sessions, right? You can go there and. Yes, ma'am. I'm actually I was the session, but. Uh, please proceed, but I'm another rule. I have one of the set is here, but not, uh, I think, in there. Because I was the session, but not able to find them. Then you can maybe watch the previous Tom's session. I I have definitely uh, solved problems in this. Oh, I understand madam, through this. Madam, session. this now you have told this me. Week, this uh, semester only we have done, madam. Uh, the seventh week, uh, first session on Wednesday session, Sir has done it. He has explained it very uh, big for one and a half hours. He explained this. Perfect. So you can go and watch that. Yeah, that, that video is very elaborative and explains very well. Yeah. Can I have my query no, now answered, sir? If you may allow, please. Yeah, what is it? Madam, you were explaining something in between some questions came in. Yeah, so yeah, I was going to tell you how do you get this P and Q? So P is for the domain, right? So you want uh, B is the matrix of T with respect to beta 2 for the domain and gamma 2 for the domain. And you want Q here. A is matrix with respect to beta 1 for the domain and gamma 1 for the codomain and you want t here right so if it's beta 1 here it should be beta 1 here so this will naturally be beta 2 mm -hmm. if it's gamma 1 here it will be gamma 1 here so this will be gamma 2 okay. you can remember it that way this 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 so whatever is left gamma 2 to be that <laughs> ma'am i have one question here so here uh, q is uh, gamma 2 to gamma 1 gamma Sorry, 1, uh, gamma one to gamma 2. gamma 2 yeah yeah so uh, if we uh, want to calculate q inverse then it would be the opposite uh, like uh, gamma so why are you calculating q inverse you want q you don't want q inverse madam madam but uh, q is basically what you get from transformation from gamma 1 to gamma 2 is uh, q inverse no madam actually b it's all notation. If you're going to use QB is equal to AP, then it will be Q inverse here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, ah, it, so it, it, it all depends it on what notation you follow. No, madam. But uh, even from uh, transformation from gamma 1 to gamma 2, directly we can uh, uh, say it as uh, Q only. It will be uh, that B equal to Q A P. Mm. That Q will be equal to the transformation from gamma 1 to gamma 2. Is it uh, true or false, madam? See, if you're writing, what are you saying? You're saying Q B is equal to A P, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah, no, that is okay, is, madam. That is what yeah, I understood. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No, even if you're going to follow this notation. So what will your Q here be? So what do you have? B is what? Uh, gamma 2 to beta 2. So your Q here will be gamma 2 to gamma 1. Yes, Inverse. Okay, the Q okay, that you okay, get okay, here and the Q it. that you write here are different. My Q inverse. Yeah, ah, your Q okay, inverse okay. Sorry, is my sorry. Q. Sorry. Sorry, madam. Because yeah, okay. gamma 2 to gamma 1 only in that video we have uh, yeah, done it. Inverse. Oh, okay. So Fine. if you take from yeah, gamma 1 to gamma 2 directly. Gamma 1 to gamma 2. Okay, okay. So See, gamma that's one to what gamma two. You, you needn't remember it as gamma one to gamma two. You just remember this concept and you know where you have to fill what. And then you know what is what, how what has to be expressed in terms of what. Okay, okay. 
So Ma'am, I have one question also. Uh. Here, uh, Q instead of gamma two to gamma one, why why we can't uh, write like beta uh, in terms of beta? No, I have told you no. Q see Q is an M cross M matrix. M represents the codomain, so you have to talk about the basis okay. for the codomain, not for the okay. domain. Okay, okay, ma'am. Yeah, right, right. right. Ma'am, Q is also expressed in terms of gamma two to gamma one. No, it it all depends on how you write down, right? See, if you are writing it as B is equal to Q A P, then you have to write, express gamma one in terms of gamma two because no, no, A no. is a matrix. Yeah, I actually um, told like this uh, this equation C equal to Q A P. So we are here, right? Uh, we are Q in terms of gamma one to gamma two. So yeah. I, but I Q can I express Q in terms of gamma two to gamma one? Is that wrong? Yeah, you cannot. Change the order. No, see what do you want. Based on that only, you are writing down this. You are not writing this but, randomly. But that that gamma one and gamma two are the uh, codomain basis, right? They have yes. same order. So if I change the basis uh, order, I will get another uh, matrix Q. Yeah, different matrix will get. Like, ah, different yes. matrix you will get. Which is not. But the order will change. change. Yeah, because the B is a matrix change. from uh, which uh, takes beta two to gamma two. Oh, Ma'am, but I can't understand how the uh, order will change in Q because if it is uh, gamma one is three, and gamma uh, take an example, gamma one is the order basis of three, and gamma two is another order basis of three. If I change in terms of gamma, no, one, it will be a three two. cross three matrix. That is not going to change. Okay, but it's not going to give you the B. You cannot tell. You cannot take a random Q, multiply it with A P, and say you will get B, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah. Huh. So, you cannot choose a random Q, right? I'm not going to choose random Q because here in this procedure uh, we are um, telling that express gamma one in terms of gamma two, right? Yeah, expressing Find gamma two in terms of gamma one is a random Q. It's not the this Q that you actually want. Okay. Okay. Ha. Huh. That's not going to match because. You, this is because see there is a it's actually composition of linear transformations that's happening behind so you have to compose the right card mat, uh, maps to get whatever map you want right you cannot uh, see t composition s and s composition t are not the same right yes ma'am that's exactly what you're trying to tell when you change this gamma 1 in terms of gamma 2 or gamma 2 in terms of gamma 1 okay okay So here, uh, gamma one expressed in terms of gamma two, or gamma two in expressed in terms of gamma one. This is domain. Whatever is written okay. down is domain. Down, so down this domain. in terms of yeah. Clear. Okay. Okay. To remember. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry, madam. Sorry. Yeah. I, thank you. To remember, you you know this. You know this. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Yeah. And you. And here, beta two. Uh, gamma one, gamma one cancels in A and P. Yeah, yeah. Uh, These and beta students. one and beta one in uh, cancel. Okay, that time we will remember. Okay, yeah. thanks, madam. If you are writing it like this, even then you will remember it the same way. This has to cancel. So accordingly, yeah, your Q will change. So we are done. Yeah. Okay, okay. No issues, madam. Thank you. Got it, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So this is equivalent matrices, similar matrices. They arise from the same linear transformation. That is it. Ah. Similar matrices. How will you do for similar matrices? And we have a different basis, right? So P is equal ah. to in terms of yeah. Gamma. So you have B is equal to P inverse A P. So uh, A, this is going to be same linear transformation between same vector spaces, beta beta for one matrix, gamma gamma for another matrix, right? Yes, ma'am. so you will have the same basis for both domain and codomain and that that is how you will get these matrices so these two are similar by theory how will you get the p using the linear transformation is again similar process this is gamma gamma p inverse a p a is what beta beta so this should be beta because this has to cancel right yes And what do you want as the end result? Gamma. Gamma. Yeah. 
so if you know p p inverse is just the ulta uh, beta to gamma so uh, ma'am is it uh, mandatory for the beta to beta and gamma to gamma we cannot uh, yes. change yes for similar matrices it should be the same basis for both domain and co domain okay. you cannot write beta to gamma if here you write beta to gamma they will be equivalent not similar equivalent yeah, yeah. Okay. madam here we will not say gamma 1 gamma 2 and beta 1 beta 2 Ah, you can say beta one, beta one, beta two, beta two. Not gamma one, gamma two. Same, same vector space, no? Okay. Domain and codomain should have same basis. Six with six, yes. 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 Only square matrices. So same. Okay, matrices. within the same vector space, we are finding uh, two uh, two uh, matrices. two matrices are similar or not? Yeah. Okay. Which means uh, 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 what you call uh, I don't know. Uh, if vector space is different, uh, it cannot happen, no, madam. No. Even though the if you have t from v to rank w, rank is same. Huh? If you have Even t from v to w, same. it's not similar at all because. Okay. Ah, yeah, rank in the sense you mean dimension, right? No, even yeah, then dimension, you know. same ah. dimension, different vector space cannot have similar. But... No. Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, man. But actually, um, you know, finite dimensional vector spaces. Okay, let's not get to that. No, no. Oh, yeah, no we'll do. Uh, we'll stick on to our uh, yeah, syllabus yeah. only. Yeah. Oh, ma'am. Then, yes. then, like for the equivalent one, we should mm -hmm. have let us say two by three. Or for like three by two or something that can have the equivalence, but for the similar one, it has to be two by two or three by three or yes. four by four like that. Yes. And even when we have the like order like three by three or two by two, still we need to check uh, uh, whether those two matrices are have the same rank. If they are equivalent, similar, yes. For then we'll get the similar one, and if it is uh, no, no similar. Uh, you, uh, you should have the same order, no three by two, two by three, and all. Rank yeah, and like that, just checking see, rank won't be is not enough for similar. Uh, ma'am, uh, like first I need to check if it is two by two or three by three. If it is three by three, then I need to check if the rank, uh, ranks of the two matrices are same or not. If rank same, then it is similar. No, they may have the same rank and still not be similar. For similar, you have to find a p satisfying this. There is no other check. Uh, but in the in the previous one, you said equivalent one. I need to check only the two then uh, two. Yeah, that's matrix. equivalent. For equivalent, it's only rank. Okay, rank is here, enough. Here I need to check p and p inverse multiplied by that. A yes, apart from you have the, to find the p. Uh, so apart from finding the rank, after getting the rank of these two matrices are same, still I need to check p and p inverse. I need to multiply. Yes. Then, Madam, yeah. in continuation, yeah. one more question, Madam. Uh -huh. If uh, uh, V and W are uh, subspaces of R3, hmm. then also you cannot get similar uh, uh, matrices if they are two different subspaces. No. No, okay. Yeah. At least for this course, no. Yeah, yeah. for our course, our yeah. examination purpose. Same sub same uh, Rn or same whatever is this the uh, in the same two vector space a linear transformation between the same vector space yes 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 thank you ma'am ma I have one question uh, regarding yes. the checking of a similar matrix so the formula is AP equal to PB so yes. uh, how do I consider which one is A and which one is B so should I take any one A or any one B then should the will the formula uh, be same uh, like the See, whatever you choose depends on, uh, like, see, you can call any one of them as A and any one of them as B. So, AP is equal to PB, you can write, or you can write BP is equal to what P, right? You can yeah. do it either way. Your P will be different based on how you've chosen, that's all. The P here will be the P inverse here, that's all. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, in equivalent uh, matrices, hmm. uh, also the linear transformation is the same. Hmm. Uh, only thing the basis will be different. Ah, Whereas right. in similar matrices, also the linear transformation is the same, the bases are also same, right? 
actually here the vector spaces are itself different no oh okay yeah, yeah. vector space is different yes here, here the vector space is same, same the basis is same yeah thank you ma'am what type of questions we can expect ma'am it will be mostly similar to what you've already seen in activities all with us and now you have a number of previous year question papers which you can yeah. go back and see it'll all be in that range only okay so what is an affine space translation of and how how will we find p in this yeah you'll express p you'll express gamma in terms of beta that's how you get p oh, okay okay yeah ha huh. so the affine space is nothing but a translation of a vector space a subspace so you'll have a subspace you translate it you get an affine space so something like this right you have this this is a subspace you translate it this is an affine space yes yeah yes ma'am i got locked off in the middle can you explain the affine subspace again i just started affine spaces i didn't tell anything else it's just a translation of a subspace okay yeah so you have a subspace you translate it that's an affine space so in general an affine space is uh, what going to look something like this uh, say ax plus by plus cz is equal to 0 this is how a vector space in r3 is going to look right right yes ma'am instead of the zero you'll have some number that's that's an affine space translation of a subspace so it's not exactly a subspace but it it's a translation of a subspace that's it okay uh so Some now questions have zero also in the place of p so how will we find it like can you please give an example for this no see even if you have zero a subspace is naturally an affine space no you translate it by zero units that's it right yes ma'am please explain it with an example like how will find it well it's creating a lot of confusion okay so say i have x plus 2y plus 2y is equal to 0 is this a subspace yes ma'am yes ma'am is this an affine space yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah you don't move it at all it's still you can call it an affine space because you've translated it by zero units right every subspace is an affine space not the other way around i think aggravate kar can you please mute if you're not talking to me so every subspace is an affine space so if you know if you can identify subspaces they are all affine spaces in addition to subspaces you have other affine spaces which are actually being translated by some distance oh ma'am then actually how to find out uh, let us say okay uh, the whatever subspace that is a affine space but uh, if the question is given so we how will we find out ki okay this is an affine subspace Uh, is that like if you can find a subspace which is parallel something like this if you can find a subspace the coefficient the coefficient of the uh, initial equation if it is a multiple of that uh, coefficients then that is a parallel affine space is that the understanding yeah like an affine space is going to look like this in rn the right hand And side other than zero is only in rn ha uh, only in rn we are seeing so this is how an affine space is going to look like So instead of zero, you have some number. That's it. So and then in the right hand side also, it has to be multiples of the uh, uh, initial equation, right? It cannot be only the left side ones, the coefficients alone, including so what, the right side factor. What is right let side say, here? Let us say here the in the uh, uh, below equation, uh, it is x, and if I see the uh, upper one, it is a times of x. Uh -huh. Similarly, here it is two uh, y, and there it is b. So b can no, be no, no. This a is one here. This b is two here. That's all. Yeah. So similarly, it is zero here in the in the first equation, and it, there is d. So uh, d is also like zero then. Yeah. Then it is an affine subspace. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. 
I'm actually simply we say um, if it is an append sub subspace, then origin is not there in that append subspace, right? No, you consider a subspace also as an affine space. Uh -huh. no? So the origin can, can yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. but uh, otherwise, rather than that vector subspace, otherwise the other subspaces. Then yeah. I have one doubt here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, if I have an affine subspace, that corresponding vector subspace is unique. Yes, the subspace is unique. Yes. Okay. So you have a subspace here. You translate it by some value, some vector. That okay. is how you get the affine space, right? Yes, ma'am. So but this I'm... subspace is unique. Okay. But the point with which you translate, that may be different. Any okay. point, you pick any point from here, it's going to give you the same translation. B yes. dash plus U is also going to give you the same space. Uh -huh. That U is fixed. Okay. okay. Clear. Thank you. Yeah. This cannot be parallel to any other line other than this, right? Uh -huh. You pick any other line, it's not going to be parallel to this. Yes. So can the underlying see... subspace is unique. Uh, can we see an uh, example of this one? I mean, I get the concept, but then uh, in when I mean, it comes to questions, how the questions would be and how do we go about it? The approach, that's, that's where I'm slightly stuck. Uh, Ma'am, reflect with us. First question is on a fine subspace. So can we solve that? That is. Nothing. No, that reflect with us problem is a really long problem. I, the last or uh, the previous term, I took one entire session to solve that problem. Nine months back, nine months back, one the video is there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. You can watch that video. The en entire session I did just this problem. Okay, man. Yeah. So it's going to be something like this like you're going to have an equation, say x plus 2y is equal to 3. Is this an affine space? Yes. Yes. Because there is a subspace equal to zero. which, when translated, gives you this. See, this plus, what is the point that you have to add? Uh, 3 comma 0, right? And we can actually derive this. I mean, how this 3 yeah. comma 0 came, I guess. I yeah. Mean, this... x equals 2y minus, uh, sorry, 3 minus 2y, and, and we put that. And we break it down and we get you, this space. You get a, you take any point on this line. That's with that that when you add with this, you will get the subspace, a fine space. Mm -hmm. So yes. any point take we we can take any point and it will give zero, then it will be a affine subspace. No, no, it should give you this any point on this line, the affine the translator. It should line. give you three. It should give three. That x plus two y should give you three. You can take 0, 3 by 2 plus this. Again, it's going to or be. Even 1, so 1 also will give you 3, right? Ah, so 1, 1, 1 right. Yeah. yeah, any point on this line that will act as the V plus the subspace U is going to give you this L. And if we have x plus y plus z equals to 5, then how will we approach it? Same, exactly same. X plus Y plus Z is equal to we'll 5. three coordinates for that. Three, three. Okay. Yeah, the underlying subspace is X plus Y plus Z is equal to 0. And then you add the any point on this plane, that's all. Okay. 0, 5, 0, or 0, 0, 5, or what? 2, 2, 1, any point on this plane. You add it with the underlying subspace, you will get this affine space. Uh -huh. Is is there any uh, way to just look at the equation and say that it is not an affine space, subspace? If you cannot find an underlying subspace, see, an affine space is going to look like this, linear. Yeah, yeah. So if this is not happening, then not. That's it. Okay. Say, for example, you have a circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. This cannot be an affine space, right? Affine space. Yeah. Because it's a circle. It's not, see, you know all the subspaces in R3. Or R2. Yeah. So you just have to think translations of those. You cannot translate a, a line and get a circle. So this is not an affine space. No, no, actually, no, affine space we... must be linear, right? Yes. Okay. So, so but then x square plus y square is equal to zero is also a affine space. That's zero. No, that's just the zero point. No, zero comma zero. That's just this point. Oh, Nothing oh, else. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, Ma'am, uh, one small uh, small query here. Like uh, uh, mm -hmm. when we say multiples of the base, let us say u, and we are getting the u prime, so mm -hmm. that can also become an affine uh, subspace, right? But uh, as you said, u plus b also becomes an affine subspace. Let us no, say. No, no. Can you can you repeat that? Multiples of u mean u u the uh, the line which passes through the origin that is here that represents u. And uh -huh. if I let us say uh, the equations like ax plus bi plus cj is equal to d, in that case, if I let us say I am writing uh, to, to, to a or uh, 3 3b or you know 4c, that becomes let us say 5d. So that becomes an affine surface because that is translated with that multiple factors, let us say uh, two times or three times like that. Two, 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 you're saying? Uh, yeah, two, three, four, whatever, yes. So parallel no, no, you cannot multiply two, three, four, and all that. Uh, no, uh, you means I'm uh, saying uh, okay, with one in uh, let us say one scholar scholar quantity, I'm multiplying and I'm shifting that plane to the uh, by that much of unit. Hmm. So that becomes some affine surface, right? Correct, no? If it is yeah, but when you multiply, you're not going to change the line. No, it's going to be the same line. No, with whatever factor you multiply, you're going to get the same line. The e See, one. are you saying you? 2u, 3u are all different. No, they are all the same subspaces. They are all the same line. Then addition of then addition of that element also that become that has to also be uniform. Let us no, say no, no, uh, no. See, you are not adding an element in this subspace. If you take an element from this subspace and add, it's still going to be here because any subspace is closed under addition. So you take any vector. If I take a u from u and add u with u, you're going to get the same u. This v does not belong to u. That is the catch. That is from a fine subspace. Okay. Okay. That so is why it is I... moving away from the subspace. No, because if it belongs to the subspace, it's going to be inside the subspace again and again. It's closed under scalar multiplication, closed under addition. Okay, so that factor from where I'm getting and adding so that it is getting separated by that much of amount. So it, it, it depends on what is the affine subspace you're looking at. See, this x plus 2y is equal to 3. You want to check whether this is an affine subspace or not. So you yes. will take a point from this line. That is why I'm taking this 3, 0. From this line, I'm taking that point. 0, 3 by 2. From this line, I'm taking x plus 2y is equal to 3. Oh, ma'am, from which line? I could not uh, understand. X the, plus 2y is equal to 3. Okay, from that line you are taking whether... Uh, ah, you have x plus 2y is equal to 0. And then you have x plus 2y is equal to 3. You pick any point from this line and add it with this subspace. Then you will get this affine space. Okay, so that linearity has to be maintained in the, from the original equation and if the value itself like the right hand side value gets changed that then only we can say that is the affine subspace yeah your, this is the vector from this line that you want okay. so okay. an affine space looks like this p plus u where this v belongs to the l actually Ma'am, ma mm -hmm. ma can you please solve one question for this? Like, if it's clear, because I find the spaces like. What do you want me to solve? Can you pick a question and yeah, tell me? 7.2 activity question. Can you solve any one? 7.2 activity. Okay, let me pick the first question. You have an affine space, x plus y plus 2z is equal to 6. Then which of the following subspaces corresponds to the affine space L? How do you know that x plus y plus 2z is equal to 6 is an affine space? It's a plane, right? And it's a linear. Ah, it's linear, right? So it's being translated. Yeah, it's a plane that has been translated from the origin, right? That is why it is an affine space. And how will you find the underlying subspace? Ma'am, we can uh, substitute 
either x or y or z in terms of the other and then we break the coordinates and find the support point or translation vector and we convert it back to the subspace i mean the no, why do you so much earlier. the only thing Ma that the you points, have to do you can, is the places they have given that equal to 6 the basis ah, they have given to is take the 6 yeah, yeah you just have to look at the parallel plane parallel plane the parallel plane that passes through the origin if it passes if it's parallel then all the coefficients of x y z should be the same right only then it is parallel this is what yes. this is any parallel line and it has to pass through the origin that is 0 comma 0 comma 0 should lie on the plane so it has to be equal to 0 that's it this is the underlying subspace but the plane was given like x plus y plus 2z equals to 6 okay fine what is the problem your coefficients will all be the same because it has to be parallel uh, ma'am uh, then every uh, for corresponding every x y z factor uh, is equal to 0 that will be always parallel to that right whatever yes. equation is being given yes that will be is... the upper subspace yeah into the origin but what would be the other possibilities uh, which will also uh, will, uh, fall in the category of affine uh, subspace apart from the zero ones like uh, let us say ax plus by plus cz is equal to d and X, ax plus by plus cz is equal to zero that is always there but apart See, from this, this is possibility. this is another affine space right oh, yes. ma'am can a point represent an affine space exactly why not how how ma'am you tell me how what is the affine corresponding uh, subspace? Zero, that is uh, zero, 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 x zero, zero x plus zero y plus zero z, is it? That's all, yeah. Okay. It's the point. Okay. You're shifting the origin to a point. Okay. Okay. Origin is a subspace, so you just shift that and get a space, subspace, affine okay. space. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, from 7.2, can you uh, tell the fourth question? and eight let u be the subspace of the vector space given by a basis okay so first you have to find out what u is so you'll get an equation for u and then find just change the, the zero to something else that's it you're given the subspace you have to find the affine space so you're given this you have to find the affine space corresponding to this there's also the okay. answer there's also the answer anything it's okay. translated. There's no use of the, uh, the basis that is given 0, 1, minus 3. No, using the basis only you will get the subspace U, no? Otherwise, how will you get the equation? Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay. And the uh, eighth one? Eighth one, that's an affine mapping. That I guess I did in one of the sessions, right? I remember doing it. Okay, fine. What is an affine mapping? So you use a linear transformation to go from one affine space to one. Yeah, affine exactly. So an affine mapping is something that is like a linear transformation, but uh, just kind of translated, just like how subspaces are being translated, no? just a little push away from the normal behavior. So you have uh, what? a function between two affine spaces. So now I have an affine space here and another affine space, say this, L and L prime. Do you all agree that these are affine spaces, at least by the look of it, in R2? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, because they are translated lines from, uh, there's some line passing through the origin, which is parallel to this. So it's a translation. So yes, these are affine spaces. So I want to talk about a mapping between these two spaces l and l prime so it's an affine mapping if there is a mapping between the underlying subspaces so corresponding to l i have a u and corresponding to l prime i have a u prime so l is say u plus uh, or what v plus u and l prime is v prime plus u prime say i have something like this so the affine mapping is nothing but talking about a shift of 
the linear transformation between the underlying subspaces. So between u and u prime, I can have a linear transformation, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, because they are subspaces. So between them, I can have a linear transformation. So an affine mapping is just a little shift of this linear transformation. So you pick any point here. You want to find what is the image of this point under this mapping. So how will you find that? Ah, so from L, you will first go to U because I know only T, right? Yes. From L, I will go to U. I will look at the corresponding point in U. And then from U to U prime, I will go using the map T, right? Mm. And then from U prime, I will come to L prime. That is the image. Yes. I'm here, I have one doubt. Huh. I, I understand this procedure, but I have a doubt here. Uh, there is a linear transformation from u to u u prime, right? Yes. Vector yes. subspaces. Huh. Mm. So my question is, if there is there exists any linear transformation that is directly going to this affine space, affine, affine subspace to that affine subspace, mm. is that any possible? No. You're saying is there a linear transformation from L to L prime? Huh. Yes, ma'am. Is that it is possible? possible? It won't be it's a linear transformation possible. then, right? Yes. T of zero will be zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that is one missing. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am? Yes. Uh, can you do the uh, question eight in that activity 7.2? Yeah, I'll quickly do that. So you have an affine mapping. Oh, this one is simple, right? See, how is an how is an affine mapping going to look like? So yeah, in general, how is F going to look like? F of uh, say x comma y is going to be what are you doing you will first shift it to u and then take the image of u right yes. and then shift back so it's going to be v prime plus t of, t of not x comma y it is going to be that corresponding Vector say space. yeah u1 u2 something x comma y you will first move it to u u1 u2 in u and then use the map t and find t of u1 u2 this is in l and then you will finally shift it to l prime right so this is going to be v plus something this is going to be v plus u1 u2 Agreed? Ma'am, it's confusing. See, did you understand this figure? Yes, yes sir. That's exactly what I've written here. You have a point in L. You want to find out what is its image in L prime, right? You have a point in L. You want to find out what is its image in L prime yeah. under the mapping F. So what will you do? You will first go to U, right? How will you go to U? You know L is V plus U, right? Yes. And I know X comma Y belongs to L, which means there is a point in U such that x comma y is equal to v plus u1 u2 agreed yeah yes ma'am so this is that point in u which i'm talking about right perhaps it will come to the figures of the question yeah. it, perhaps it might be much more better to understand this is that point okay ma'am and then now once I'm in U, I know how to go to U prime, right? Yeah. Using the linear transformation T, right? Yes. And once I'm in U prime, I know how to get back to L prime, right? 
Yes. I just add that V prime. That's all. Okay. So that's an affine mapping. So let's quickly do that. Huh. So how is an affine mapping going to look like? A linear transformation, say between R2 to R2. Let's just stick to R2 to R2. It's going to look like this. AX plus DY, comma CX plus DY. Agreed? I cannot have constants. I cannot have products. I cannot have higher powers. This is the only thing allowed, right? Yes, ma'am. So how is an affine mapping going to look like? Uh, Ma'am, huh? how did you get the t of x, y equals ax plus by cx plus dy? Any linear transformation from R2 to R2 should look like this, right? You cannot have products of x and y. You cannot have higher powers. You cannot have constants. So this is how it's going to look, right? A, B, C, D can be anything, right? Yes, ma'am. So this is the general way it looks. So how will an affine mapping look like? Any vector plus C of x, y. That's all. So it's going to be what? Say some E comma F plus T of x comma y. So it's going to be what? AX plus BY plus E comma CX plus DY plus F. That's all. Ma'am. Huh. Ma'am, in 7.2 question 2, why option 1 is correct? 7.2 question 2, why option 1 is right? Because it's, what is that? What is x squared plus y squared is equal to 0? Ma'am, it's not linear, right? No, it's just 0, comma 0, right? It's just that point. point. x squared plus y squared is equal to 0, it's just 0, comma 0. Okay, so now with that last question, what was it? Question number eight. So you're given f of two comma three, f of two comma one, f of one comma zero. You're you're given some values. So you'll get some equations, right? What is f of two comma three? Is two uh, a plus three b plus e comma two c plus three d plus e. This is given to be something, three comma minus one. Plus f, ma'am. Ah, yeah, this is f. Three comma minus one. Then f of uh, two comma one. Two comma one is two a plus b plus e, two c plus d plus f. This is equal to something, one comma two. And then f of 1 comma 0 is 0 comma 1. f of 1 comma 0 is a plus e comma c plus f. This is 0 comma 1. So now I have a system of linear equations. I just solve and then find the values of a, b, c, d, e, f. From there I can find out what is f of 2 comma minus 5 or something. Minus 2 comma 5. Uh, Ma'am, I got a bit confused here. Like the affine spaces we are finding out, right? From the from the basic equation. Affine is, mapping. Map, affine mapping. So the basic mm -hmm. equation was given by ax plus by comma cx plus dy. And from that, we are just adding some elements into it. And we are getting the uh, affine mapping. Mapping, section. yes. So this is how an affine mapping from R2 to R2 is going to look like. From any affine subspace in R2 to an affine mm -hmm. subspace in R2. Ma'am, it's the same for all R2 to R2 questions, right? Yeah, if you have R3, see, you take any affine subspace of R2. This is oh. how it's going to look like. Yes, uh, so the affine subspace is f of x, y equals e comma f plus t of x comma y. Okay, this shouldn't be exactly x comma y, but uh, yes, for this notation sake, we can keep it as x comma y. Madam, here I am having a doubt. Uh, I know, uh, 2a plus 3b plus e equal to 3, isn't it, ma'am? Yeah. First, 
2a plus b plus e equal to 1. Uh. So 2a, 2a, e are constants. So only 3b is changing. Mm. So 3b is 3, b is 1. No, 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 no. That's not how you solve, right? This is 3. 2a plus b plus e is 1. So you will subtract this and you'll get 2b is equal to 2. So b is 1. Uh, max value 1 and 2. So, B, if one, uh, two, then uh, these two will be 0, madam. Hmm. So, B is 1 means, yes, you'll you get 2. You'll get, uh, no, no, see, you will, you're will. you having a system of linear equations. Right? Yeah, yeah so now I got it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, ma'am, this value 1, 2, and 3, comma, minus 1, that you have just given as a part of example, or it is? The no, it's there in AQ 7.2, question 8. The value given in the question, like one to one three formation. Okay, so yeah. best thing. Okay. Um, here, here we have to solve for A and B. That's it, is it? A, B, none of these is known. No, A, B, E, so, okay. C, D, F. Okay, and uh, you have six then, equations one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six equations, okay. six variables. Six unknowns. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Fine mapping. Yes, ma'am. So far, so good. Yeah. So that reflect with us problem. I will suggest you definitely watch that video because it includes all affine spaces, affine mapping, everything. So you'll get a Which clear. Which is it, madam? Or date entry? Uh, last time someone had posted it on uh, the chat box. If uh, someone knows or quickly has access to that reflect with us video maybe you can just put it on the chat box uh, man week six i guess right no this week seven no the last time also it was week seven Achha, the week previous seven. time okay. ah. uh ma'am yes uh, as promised would you please uh help me with to just guide me in that basis Which one? Cardinal, cardinal, cardinal basis and non spaces just giving me one example, small example, which will clear that concept. Yeah, we'll finish everything and then come to that. Because okay. we still have week one eight. more week. Huh. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Inner product we have to see, ma'am. Yeah. So what is an inner product? Quickly. A function from any R into R. Ma'am, uh, what about inner length and angles? In, uh, inner product is V cross V to R. Huh, v length cross and v angles. To R, sorry, yeah. Yeah, once again, length and angles, it's just that formula, no? Formula, okay. okay. Uh -huh. You just find the length of a vector. So there is no concept, right? Uh, we can just put that. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just those formulas. Uh, so in a product, it's a function from uh, V cross V to R satisfying a set of conditions, right? What are the conditions? Positive definite. Positive definiteness, bilinearity, yeah. symmetry. Bilinearity two. I mean there are two and symmetric uh, symmetricity. It's linearity. Bilinearity is a different thing, but yeah, when it's R, when in this course it's all real vector spaces, so bilinearity follows. And uh, yeah, this is equal to zero if and only if V is equal to zero. And then V plus W comma U is equal to V comma U plus W comma U. Uh, C U comma V is C times U comma V. And U V is equal to V. Right? So positive definiteness, linearity, symmetry. If these are satisfied, then it is a... Uh, it's an inner product and uh, a vector space with an inner product. So you, for a vector space, you already have a plus and dot. Along with that, if you have an inner product, it's called an inner product space. Right? So how do you verify something is an inner product or not? We have done a lot of examples, so you can go back and check that. 
and uh, on inner product spaces what do we know we study norm of a vector and all that right you can talk about length of a vector in any vector space uh, ma'am one small doubt here the first equation uh, like u and p when it becomes like uh, zero mm -hmm. uh, then again the second equation also we need to check i think uh, that itself is sufficient no? but uh, if it is let us say i do have a vector and i'm multiplying with the same vector mm -hmm. uh, and if i'm getting some value but in that case i need to check with the u plus w and u that uh, that in that case i can check for the linearity but when it becomes zero do i need to check this also for yes getting... you have to check all the four conditions in all cases none of these conditions follows from the others so you have to verify everything ma'am a short uh, example on how uh, to do this of uh, with matrix because while uh, doing the even in while uh, checking for uh, linearity also uh, becomes very confusing like you know, when you uh, additions and so in the, if the see linearity um at least addition part the addition part will follow as long as it is in the linear in the usual sense that is you don't have any uh, uh, squares or cubes or anything or product of terms and all that it's going to be linear means uh, the addition part is going to follow this scalar multiplication as long as you don't have a modulus or something it's going to follow right and uh, uh, ma'am i have one question uh so uh, we have one derived formula right suppose uh, u is can you please write uh, u is x1 y1 hmm. sorry uh, u is x1 x2 okay and v is y1 y2 okay so uh, by inner product uh, simply we have to do x1 y1 plus x2 y2 suppose okay this is the dot product right uh, okay this is the dot product now we have one derived formula right that uh, uh, x1, x2 minus x1, y2 minus x2, y1 plus 4, y1, y2. Okay. Uh, when when to use that uh, formula? No, it's not a formula. Uh, See, no, no, these uh, are all not formulas. These are the inner product functions that are given in the question. You have to verify whether it is an inner product or not. That is the question. These will be given to you. These are not formulas. Okay. Uh, so in I um, mean general manner we can do directly uh, do dot product right suppose you want to do the inner product no it will be uh, given in the question what is the inner product will be given okay even if it is uh, so, dot product it will be given in the question either as okay, dot okay, product okay, okay, or okay, okay. standard inner product it's called the standard inner product <laughs> or dot product okay so standard dot inner product means that that long uh, means long expression right this one dot product okay. okay this is a standard uh, so okay this is a standard okay yes. and uh, that uh, formula is uh, that expression is it will be given in question right yeah okay so the inner product is a function it's a function satisfying all these conditions so it will be given to you. The function will be given to you. Unless the function is given, you won't know what the what is the function we are talking about. So it will be given. And you have to verify whether it satisfies all these conditions. Ma'am, when we get the first, uh, when we do that po pos uh, positive definiteness, uh, mm -hmm. in the end, when we get the uh, equation like, you know, x square plus y square, is so that we find like it is greater than equal to zero. But then again, we have to prove that it is also equal to zero then only it is that condition satisfies ah yeah yeah you have to verify both you have to verify this part also v is equal to zero ah then you put that condition whatever you're getting if you're already getting greater than or equal to zero good uh, and then uh, uh, when you put it equal to zero you should be able to show that all the terms become equal to zero means x y and all that madam can we do one problem in this madam possible yeah we've already done a lot right uh, we have uh, probably done all the questions can you quickly tell me uh, yes some... madam x1 y1 uh, uh, dot product of x1 y1 comma x2 y2 equal to 2 x1 x2 plus 3 y1 y2 
this is what 2x1 x2 x2 plus 3y1 y2 will this be an inner product quickly just by looking at it yes ma'am yeah no cross terms at all so no question of symmetry right symmetry yes, is never going to be a problem because there are no cross terms in the sense that and you it have only these terms as well. yeah this is going to be positive definite as well because you don't have any negative coefficients right only positive coefficients mera one by one can we do mera just no 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 i am telling by the look of it we will do uh, okay. and is linearity going to be a problem no ma'am no no higher powers right no. Yeah. yeah no higher powers or no no see there are no terms containing variables from the same uh, vector right so everything is going to be satisfied so how will you verify first v comma v should be equal to should be greater than or equal to 0 so x comma y with x comma y should be greater than or equal to 0 this is the first condition right and the, the second part of it also so what is this going to be equal to Two x one x two two x into two x one x one plus y one square. Yeah, I have written x y, so let's call it x squared and y squared. This is always greater than or equal to zero, right? Okay. But and this is equal to zero. Equal to zero. When Even only if x is equal to y, you have yeah. sum of squares, no? So. The only term it is time it is zero is when both are equal to zero. Yeah. Sum of squares equal to zero means each term is equal to zero. Sum of non-negative terms equal to zero means each uh, term in the sum is equal to zero. Right. Can you show the matrix representation of this? Ah, uh, ma'am, just one quick thing. Uh, how did you get uh, the two x square plus three y square? You simply multiplied two x into x, or yeah, two yeah, times okay. x into x. Okay, because it's x one and x two. That's why I was wondering. So you just take it as x. You don't. Uh... No, here I've written x comma y, x comma y. I've taken oh. v as x comma y. So v comma v is what I'm calculating. Okay. Single vector. Yeah. First condition. This okay. first condition. The uh, linearity shall I skip because it's all going to be satisfied, right? You just combine the terms, take the common term, uh, common uh, coefficient outside, and all that. Okay. And symmetry, yes, symmetry is satisfied. X two y. If I write x two y two first. It's going to be two times x two into x one plus three times y two into y one, right? Okay. So it's the same. See, as long as you don't have any x one y two y one x two symmetry is not going to be a problem. Okay. Uh, this is eight mark question in one of the question paper. No, no. Along with this, something must be there, right? There must be some. No, but the four. They, they have given all the four conditions: one, two, three, four, and they are asking which are options are correct. That's oh, oh so when you multiply, it becomes okay, fine. Uh. <coughs> Ma'am, can we four use values uh, and then check the conditions? No, it has to be satisfied for all. This is for all v. This is for all no, u v w. Yeah, you cannot can... give values. Okay. Only if it is false, values will help. Just because it is satisfying for certain values doesn't mean it is satisfying for all values. And for symmetric condition, uh, if we represent it using matrices, that is a faster way to, to check if the inner product is. I mean, the second uh, condition. Yeah, so uh, if you don't know the uh, matrix representation, how, from where did you get to know this? 
this course is uh, i mean one of the videos the professor itself he said um, he told about the symmetric oh. condition if it is uh, see you can write down this uh, whatever the function is this function as a matrix x1 x2 no what x1 y1 oh, no x1 oh, yeah okay. x1 y1 transpose the matrix x2 y2 Exactly. What is this matrix going to be? See, if you had A, B, C, D, you'll get... Uh, 2, 0, 0, 3. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, X1, Y1 transpose. A, X2 plus B, Y2. C, X2 plus D, Y2. And then when you multiply with this, you'll get A, X1, X2 plus uh, B X1 Y2 plus C X2 Y1 plus D Y1 Y2, right? So if you can put it as a matrix, the coefficient of X1 X2 is this diagonal entry. The coefficient of Y1 Y2 is this diagonal entry. And these are going to come from the cross terms, right? Yes, yes, correct. Exactly. Yeah. So if this matrix is symmetric, and positive definite. Then, okay, what is a positive definite matrix? Uh, A should be greater than 0. Determinant of A, B, C, D should be greater than 0. Greater than 0. If this is satisfied, then it's going to be an inner product. Okay. Yes, ma yes. So for this inner product, it's going to be what? 2, 3, 0, 0. No cross terms. So 0, 0. Coefficient of this is 2, first diagonal entry. Coefficient of this is 3, second diagonal entry. This satisfies all those conditions, right? Is it symmetric? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Is the first diagonal entry positive? Yes. Is the determinant positive? Yes. So it is, this is an inner product. This one is an inner product. See, if you don't know this matrix representation, there's no need to confuse. You just... Uh, do the no, no. Once you prove it as inner product, then all the four conditions will get satisfied, no madam? Yes, if it's an inner product, it is only because all the four conditions are satisfied. Okay. Okay, okay madam, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so once we have an inner product, we can talk about lengths of vectors, right? Norm. So when is something a norm? We know length of any vector is greater than or equal to 0, right? Yes. And when is the length of a vector equal to 0? Only if and only if the vector is 0 vector. Yeah, the vector yeah. has to be 0. And we know that the triangle inequality is satisfied, right? Yes. So the sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than or equal to the length of the third side. So that's the triangle inequality. And then if I multiplied a vector by a constant, it's going to get the vector's length is going to get multiplied by the magnitude of the constant. So any function that satisfies these three conditions is a norm. This is the usual length notion that we know. So it's just a generalization into any vector space. You verify these, and then if it satisfies, then it's a norm. And once we have lengths in usual, this is the generalization of the length concept. So once we have this, we can do a lot in vector spaces. So then orthogonal vectors comes into picture, right? You have two vectors. Now that you have lengths, you can talk about angles. So you can tell when two vectors are perpendicular. Perpendicular in some sense that the inner product is zero. Right? Orthonormal vectors. That is, their lengths are all unit vectors. You have unit vectors 
that are orthogonal. Unit vectors means their norm is equal to 1. And once you have all these vectors, you can talk about the Gram-Schmidt process, right? Ma'am, I have one doubt. Huh. Huh. Uh, the set like yes to the power two, something like that. But I, but I can't understand the notation. This process. one. Yes, yes, this one. S perp perpendicular. So if you have, say, uh, you have this point. What are the vectors perpendicular to this point? That entire uh, parallel. Ah, this, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah. So now I can talk about a set of vectors and the vectors that are perpendicular to all these vectors. No vector is perpendicular to all three of them simultaneously, right? Yes, yes. Ah, so that S perp will be uh, zero here. Okay. But say I take these two vectors, this vector and this vector. What are the vectors that are simultaneously perpendicular to both? In, uh, the span of the, the entire line. That entire line, right? Yes. Ah, that is what. That is what S purpose. So you have a set of vectors v1, v2, vn. You are looking at all those vectors. That are simultaneously perpendicular to all these. V i comma w equal to zero. Yeah, for all i. For all. Simultaneously. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, could you just explain one more time how, like, the Gram-Schmidt process, how it uses this, like, removing s perpendicular from each of the vectors? Uh, no, you're not actually removing. You're trying to. Consider S perpendicular in each stage. Okay. Because you're trying to look at vectors that are perpendicular at each stage, right? To all the previous mm. vectors. Yeah, yeah. So you're not removing, you're basically looking at the S perp of all the okay. previous vectors. Yeah. Got it. Ma'am, what is symmetry condition in inner, in inner, inner product? Inner product UV should be equal to inner product VU. You take the inner product in any order, you it should get the same answer. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm thinking. Yeah. So what does the Gram-Schmidt process do? It converts any basis into an orthonormal basis, right? You just follow those uh, formulae and uh, what step by step, you convert any basis into an orthonormal basis. <laughs> Ma'am, I have one question. Uh, that W is coming from where? Any, any, the vector space. Whatever is the vector space. This S is a subset of some vector space, right? Yes, ma'am. That vector space. So you're, here it's R2. You're looking at all those vectors in R2, which are simultaneously perpendicular to both these vectors. Okay. Ma'am, so S perp is a set of all vectors that are perpendicular to S, is it? Ah, the entire set S. Yes. So the the vectors of S S perp will not be mutually orthogonal, right? No, 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 no. Okay. If they'll be orthogonal with every element. Every in S. element in S. Yes. Okay. This is a subspace. S perp is a subspace. Subspace. Okay. S is just a set, right? Yeah. But S perp will always be a subspace. Actually, this is a bad way to draw this. See, I was just giving a visualization. These vectors are actually like this, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is, I was just giving an idea of what S perp is, but. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. OK. So uh, then what? Projection. What is projection? Shortest distance. 
ah you have a you have a subspace you're trying to when you have a point outside of the space and you're trying to project it onto this subspace you're just trying to push it into this subspace so you're looking at the perpendicular the foot of the perpendicular basically so that's how you do projection how will you do that you find an orthonormal basis for the subspace say u or say usually we use w so you find an orthonormal basis for w and then the formula is simple right ha yeah. so you find an orthonormal basis for w and then you find the inner product of the vector with each of these vectors and then multiply with the so this is the projection of v on w basically you are using projection in the gram schmidt process the formulas that you have and all that it's just these projection things yes ma'am okay. uh, <clears throat> ma'am uh, in lecture uh, sir uh, has given another formula for this projection okay what is that uh, formula uh, you just please write uh, projection suppose we have you have given uh, v uh. this one right so this uh. will be inner product of uh, v into w means uh. v uh, sorry inner product of v w divided by inner product of uh, w with w and into w so this w center uh, ah this is the norm right this is norm of yes. w squared right when you talk uh -huh. about orthonormal basis all this is one right yes correct correct that is why this, it's missing here mm -hmm. and for projection need to just multiply with uh, uh, this w w yeah yes yes at uh, the, the same thing just just here we are one value is one that's why yes that is omitted yes, yes. Ma'am, just a clarification. So this is projection of V on W, or the other way, because that is always confusing. V on W. W is the subspace. V is any vector outside of it. Okay. You're v projecting on... V onto the subspace W. Okay. So, ma'am, we can say uh, the shortest distance to uh, shortest distance for V to reach on W. Yes. Okay. So it will be the perpendicular. Will be the always be the shortest distance. Yes, when you use dot product, we are always using dot product here, right? Mm -hmm. yes, so geometrically, of, it is foot of the perpendicular. Ma'am, uh, in the denominator, instead of uh, inner product, we can directly write or uh, norm square, right? Of the yes. This is norm square, norm w square. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, can you do the question? Seven in eight point two. Eight point two. Ma'am, quick uh, question. Uh, yeah. uh, if it is mentioned, it is or if the orthogonal bases are given, then uh, do we have to uh, in in the projection or uh, we have to? You have to convert it into orthogonal. Uh -huh. You have to divide by the norm for all the values. And already, if it is mentioned that it is orthogonal, then bases, then we don't have to do anything. Yeah, you can directly use it. So this formula is only for an orthonormal basis. Okay, question seven and eight point two. The problem is with the norm, right? Who had asked question seven? Uh, Ma'am, huh? it's to find whether it's an orthonormal basis. Ha. Huh, yeah. So. Did you prove that two comma three and minus four comma four are orthogonal to each other? Ma'am, how do you prove that? The inner product is given, right? You just have to verify that inner product you two comma three with four comma minus four is zero or not. We just substitute and check each one. Ha 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 ha. Okay, thank you. What is that? Two <laughs> two times uh, three times three times. Two comma minus uh, two with minus four plus two times three with four. Six six is zero, right? 
so this is orthogonal to each other so find the norm 2 comma 3 with 2 comma 3 you have to do that is 3 times 2 with 2 plus uh, 2 times 3 with 3 so this is 12 plus 18 30 similarly for the second bit uh, what is what are the what is 3 and 2 here uh, no it's given that question uh, okay, okay, okay. aq 8.2 question 7 uh, sorry ma'am why have you taken 2 comma 3 one more, if you can explain it one more time no like it's, the, it's three, given in the question uh, it's there in the question these are the vectors yeah, in the yeah, question. Yeah. i got the first part of it the second part uh, i didn't get i'm trying to find the norm of i, I want to check in the question we have asked uh, we are asked which one is an orthonormal basis or something so i yeah. want to check what is the norm of 2 comma 3 right so 1 by root 30 into 2 comma 3 is a unit vector right if it's an orthonormal basis i should have only unit vectors there right yes sir. yeah yes, that's sir. what that's why i found the norm of it norm squared basically okay after this what do we have rotations right rotation matrix and all that Rotation matrix, you know, no, it's just the formula. You just remember it as a formula at least. Two cross two rotation. Just a single line, can you please explain? Single line. Huh? Two cross two rotation. I think I did this in the previous uh, uh, session. This is the two cross two rotation matrix. Okay. That is, you take any point. You rotate, it means if any vector is rotated by an angle theta, then this is the rotation matrix that you get. And uh, 3 cross 3, if you want to rotate about the x axis, keep the x axis fixed because when you want to rotate it this way, this doesn't move. Every other vector which is outside of this moves. So here you'll have the 2 cross 2 rotation matrix cos minus sine, sine cos x-axis remains fixed. If you are rotating about the y-axis, y-axis remains fixed. And in the other portion, you fit the 2 cross 2. Similarly, for z, when you are rotating about the z-axis, z-axis remains fixed. In this portion, you will have the 2 cross 2 rotation. Miss, uh, the 1 after 2 cross 2 rotation is the uh, 3 by 3 rotation of rotated around x axis, right? This is x axis, yes. Okay. The last one is z, and before that is y. The last one is, ah, yeah, this, this is y. Yeah, this is y. Because the y axis is fixed. Oh, okay, ma'am. This is z. We have to find the determinant, madam. What you have to do here? No, no, not find the determinant. This is the rotation matrix. So if you want to find the uh, where some vector is going, you just multiply with this matrix. That's it. Rotation by an angle theta. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then what? We have orthogonal transformation, right? What is an orthogonal transformation? A transformation that preserves angles, right? Orthogonal transformation. Right? Yes. So if you have a map from V to W, then if it preserves angles, inner product of UV is equal to inner product of PU TV uh, for all UV. That is an orthogonal transformation. So you just verify whether this satisfies. Oh, uh, 
we are doing v to v right in the course yes only v to v so you just verify this can you please mute if you're not talking to me ma'am can you give us it some no. please and oh, the orthogonal orthogonal transformation also preserves length as well lens and angle yes 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 once it preserves angles yes lengths too okay uh my example ha uh, yes ma'am an example on orthogonal transformation uh there were some examples in solve with us right i'll quickly check there we can check like the x plus y divided by the under root two. ah yeah x plus y by root 2 x oh, minus so y by root 2 right oh yes t from r2 to r2 t of x comma y is x plus y by root 2 comma x minus y by root 2 so this is an orthogonal transformation you can verify that all the conditions means t of u uh, t u comma t v is equal to u comma v using the dot product this uh, i think we are uh, in the week session i had done in detail so you can just go there and uh, quickly watch that portion how to verify something is an orthogonal transformation or not and all that and what is an orthogonal matrix like the, the columns of are... that matrix would be orthonormal uh -huh. columns and rows right a transpose a and a transpose ha for square matrices yeah yeah so uh, here yeah in this course we are looking at square matrices so if this is satisfied it's an orthogonal matrix and we also saw what is the relation between a a transpose identity and a transpose a identity right here i guess or uh, a transpose a means a transpose the rows of a transpose are columns of a so the columns are orthonormal and here the rows are orthonormal right columns of a rows of a right yes ma'am Yeah. Ma'am, once uh, the z transpose a is equal to a into a transpose z is satisfied, this uh, a transpose a the columns are ortho orthogonal and rows are ortho sorry ortho normal and rows are ortho normal also automatically satisfied. The only for square matrices. Check? Okay. But for rectangular matrices, it need not uh, be satisfied. Pertaining to this course, we are only looking at uh, square matrices, right? Yeah, but I can give you a rectangular matrix that satisfies this. No, without I won't call it an orthogonal matrix. I'll give you a, a a rectangular matrix that satisfies this and ask whether it satisfies A transpose's identity, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So in that case, we should also check for the columns and rows. Ha! Huh, if it's a square matrix, once this is satisfied, the other one is normal. Uh, Automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh so any anything else left to discuss? If not then we can go to the one yeah, one the weightage of ha huh. okay okay still weightage what will be the weightage of week 1 to 4 5 6 7 8 in the exam madam any idea uh, any rows of light on it that? it's possible that you'll have uh, every if every question has solving system of linear equations then week 2 has 100% weightage right yes, it, it's yes. going to be like that yeah because uh, so specifically 7 8 uh, see the questions will be like kernel image means for 5 6 7 8 only but you will be using the concepts of 1 2 3 4 in every question okay but <laughs> yeah so you you cannot ignore 1 to 4 and come to the exam because you will be using without basis you cannot do anything right basically you are finding basis of kernel for example you should know what basis is 
So you need to know what a linearly independent set is, what a spanning set is. Only then you can find the basis, right? That way only it means it's not like questions will be from one to four. But no, 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 one to four, okay, but uh, but what uh, my uh, inter I mean uh, intention was? How about uh, week eight? Uh, what is the weightage of week eight? Like Gram Smith or uh, transform? I mean. Uh, Orthogonal transformations. Oh, that I have no idea because we set the question <laughs> paper like really, really long back. Okay. Ma'am, last that time. That is what uh, I was asking. Last time, generally, they were saying that always quiz two will be tougher than the other uh, two quizzes. So, this time also, is it going to be like that? Actually, uh, it depends on the performance of quiz one. Quiz one was pretty good. So I I seriously don't remember. Actually, we finished the question paper even before quiz one results came. So it was not based on the results. So it can still be easy. I don't oh. remember. I, I have no idea. Quiz <laughs> yeah. one not, not good performance at all. <laughs> oh, quiz Sorry. one, it was a generally very good performance. Oh. Okay. Because I yeah. think 